Welcome to Model Steam Engines and Boilers Part 19. This episode was made after a comment from a viewer who was asking about the pros and cons of using a Stuart Twin Launch or a Stuart Double Ten V steam engine. The image on screen at the moment is a Stuart Twin Launch engine. It was being put back together after a complete rebuild a while ago. When I first received this engine from the customer, it was literally a box of bits. Here are some edited clips from part one of the series, and you'll see how bad it was. The only thing I can see that's wrong with this is that the piston rings are not right. There are two very, very thin piston rings on the piston. It's not good practice to have two thin O-rings like this, so I've removed them and fitted the cast iron piston rings. Time now to look at the main cylinder block. This is a very important component, and it looks okay. It does on one side, at the other side the lug's broken off. This is quite common, it's no real big deal, but the fix is difficult. Thinking ahead, I can make this work by putting an extra piece of metal in and the washer which holds everything together. Here is the crankshaft. I've put it in the lathe to have a look at it and see how true it is. I'm not spinning the lathe under power for obvious reasons and I immediately see a problem. Can you see what it is? It's a very common problem. Here it is. It's a bit wobbly in the middle. Now really, if the engine was all clamped together, you may not notice this, because it's a very small problem, but it's not right. You would get a knock from the engine every time it goes over top dead centre. So this needs fixing, and the way to do it is to drill out the pin, re-lock tight the crankshaft together whilst holding it in the lathe, and then re-pin it with a larger diameter pin. As you can see, now I've cleaned it up, this pin is very sloppy, no good at all. So here we have a pile of reasonably good bits. The flywheel's okay, the piston rings are brand new, the little oil is very nice, and the bracket is a little bit dubious, but serviceable. So that's the good pile. Then we have the bad pile. Starting with these, these are the inlet and outlet manifolds, which are just going straight in the bin. They're absolutely awful. Then there is the broken cast iron lug on the cylinder, and to cap it all, the sloppy broken crankshaft. I do realise that the video clips you've just seen do not answer the question that the viewer asked. I would like to say though at this stage that a twin launch engine has two 1 inch diameter cylinders. A twin launch engine is quite powerful but needs a lot of steam to operate. Back to the video extract. I'm adjusting this eccentric which is one of a pair that operates the valve for this direction of rotation. So now I'm going to connect some air and see what happens. And we now have reverse, and it's starting to sound altogether better. There's still a way to go on the adjustment, but the sound it made at the beginning was encouraging. There was a hiss, and then the hiss stopped as the valve slammed onto the port and the engine started to work. I've paused the video here to start to answer the viewer's question. I once fitted a Stuart twin launch engine into a model steamboat. It was 53 inches long and 13 inches wide in the middle. The engine was very powerful. When I ran the engine on the bench, similar to the way I'm running this engine, using 80 pounds per square inch of compressed air, I could not stop the flywheel with my hand. When I finally fitted the engine into the steamboat and opened the regulator via radio control, the boat shot across the lake in a very unrealistic fashion for a steam launch. But this was only at the beginning of the run. In no time at all, the boiler pressure dropped and the engine was very weak, hardly running at all. I fitted a 5 inch diameter and quite long boiler into the boat, which looked completely out of scale. This is a photograph from the gallery on my website and it shows the installation of the twin launch engine with the large boiler. And in a futile attempt to try and keep the boiler topped up, I even fitted a Stuart steam-powered feed pump, which was no good at all. The boiler was 5 inches in diameter and of the water tube type, and it was fired using a blowtorch nozzle. A ceramic burner just came nowhere near, and it really did get hot in there, but it could not provide enough steam to successfully run this engine. I tried a further modification, the engine was driving a gearbox and it was geared up so the propeller went a lot faster relative to the speed of the engine and that helped a little bit but it was no good at all 
it would need a boiler twice the size of the one in the boat. Back to the video now and I'm showing how to set the valve timing. I've now moved the reversing lever into the other position to make the engine go in the opposite direction. So I'm adjusting the position of the outer pair of eccentrics to make it run a little smoother. Here are some video clips from a series I made very recently all about rebuilding a Stuart 10 V steam engine. And originally it was in a similar poor condition to the twin launch engine you've just seen. The very first job is to get rid of the Mammod flywheel. What I'm doing here is heating the flywheel with my small Proxon blowtorch. I think it's probably just stuck onto the crankshaft. It didn't take much heat to destroy the bond, and here I'm removing the flywheel using a pair of surgical forceps. I do not recommend trying what you're about to see. This procedure is not quite as easy as it looks in the video. This technique is often used in the lathe to straighten bent shafts. It requires a good sense of rhythm and plenty of practice to master. Please don't try this at home. The crankshaft is now a lot straighter than it was. I'll have another go at this later on. So it's easy to see how much straighter the crankshaft is. I've slowed the engine down using the video editor to a quarter speed. I rebuilt this engine in the series called Rebuilding a Stuart Double 10 V Steam Engine. And here it is running. The thing about a double 10 as opposed to a twin launch engine is it does not need anywhere near the amount of steam. The cylinders are both three quarters of an inch in diameter and I've used double 10 V steam engines very successfully in miniature steamboats. Generally speaking, a centreflue boiler of about eight inches long by four inches diameter will provide more than enough steam for a Stuart double 10 V. Don't forget though that it all depends on the heat source. If the heat source is weak, as some ceramic burners really are, you will not get the pressure. A double 10 V is a much better proposition for fitting into a model boat than a Stuart twin launch engine. I hope this answers the viewer's question, or at least partially answers it. To finish this video, I would like to show you something very interesting. Quite a while ago, I went to West Riding Small Locomotive Society and I was filming a model locomotive efficiency competition. Amongst the collection of engines taking part was something very, very unusual. A steam locomotive big enough to pull passengers using a Stuart Double 10 V as its motive power. That's it for me for today. I'm going to leave you with some interesting photographs of this remarkable small engine. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.